My name is Klaus Fossen. I'm the Senior Product Manager for the CorelDRAW products at Corel. Working for Corel for close to 20 years now in different positions, and I'm proud to be one of the presenters today to give you this CorelDRAW graphic suite update. With me is Mo Jogi, Design and Strategy Director at Morningstar Design. Mo is an independent artist, designer, and strategist. He has studied fine art, graphic design, and multimedia, and has worked and consulted to the leading brands in the creative industry. He serves on several local and international design associations, and his focus is on design that is sustainable and user-centric. And you will see some of the examples of what Mo is doing when we go into showing you some of the highlights of what is coming in CorelDRAW Graphic Suite. With that, let's start. I'm super excited, and I should say we are super excited and proud to introduce to you our latest flagship graphics product, CorelDRAW Graphic Suite 2020. CorelDRAW Graphic Suite really is an all-in-one graphic design suite for vector illustration, page layout, photo editing, font management, bitmap to vector tracing, and more. CorelDRAW includes applications and tools for all your graphics needs. From the flagship application CorelDRAW for vector illustration and multi-page layout, to Corel Photo Paint for professional bitmap editing, to the many other components and tools that come included with the suite to enable you to deliver great results in whatever visual communication you are creating. When it comes to building a visual brand and communicating that visual identity in all your assets, you're more than covered with CorelDRAW Graphic Suite. Logos, wordmarks, corporate collateral, designing for print, web, social, you're completely covered with the suite. These are some amazing examples of artwork created in CorelDRAW Graphic Suite from users all over the world most of which was submitted in our last international design contest that wrapped up last fall. And I want to end this samples with an artwork that is yeah, basically a piece of art, a painting done in Corel Photo Paint. So that's also possible with CorelDRAW Graphic Suite. Now I'd love to review some of the exciting new features of CorelDRAW Graphic Suite 2020. As always, we look for main focus areas that reflect the needs of designers as well as the industry landscape. We've got great new features in typography, machine learning, performance, collaboration, and of course, features inspired by you, our loyal users around the world. With 2020, you can take advantage of the flexibility of open type variable fonts, which let you interactively fine tune a font's appearance. We will see that later on when Mo shows how the new capabilities of CorelDRAW Graphic Suite work in action. The industry is just scratching the surface of variable fonts and a single variable font file offers a range of looks that used to require multiple separate fonts. CorelDRAW 2020 now also offers support for customizable multi-level bulleted and new numbered lists in paragraph text. This ensures that you can easily and clearly convey information in your designs and layouts. With CorelDRAW Graphic Suite 2020, we introduce all new machine learning powered functionality. The focus of leveraging this new technology is either on empowering you, our users, to be more productive or to create greater quality or to be more creative. And we will show you some examples of new functionality in CorelDRAW Graphic Suite 2020 that uses machine learning artificial intelligence in the background to empower you to get more productive, to get more creative. To give one example, Coral Power Trace has an all new AI assisted feature that delivers our best bitmap to vector tracing yet. Cutting edge image optimization improves the quality of a bitmap as you trace it, which delivers a much better vector result. We also have new AI powered upsampling options to help enlarge lower resolution images without losing detail. Machine learned models preserve clean edges, sharpness and fine details and remove compression artifacts and recover color details. CorelDRAW 2020 also includes new art style effects that use artificial intelligence to modify an image or object, 
to produce a stylized version while preserving the original content in a non-destructive way. And using AI technology, 2020 lets you apply bitmap effects as lenses. This gives you the freedom to manipulate or move the lens and position the effect with precision in your design. This can be done in both Coral Draw and Coral Photo Paint 2020. At the end of the day, time is money for most designers, and we know very well from you, our Coral Draw users, that besides having all the creative power in your hands, being productive is very important to you. To that end, We've made huge advancements with 2020, be it with quicker startup of the applications, much smoother text interaction, or with enhanced GPU graphics processing unit optimization on both Windows and Mac OS. As mentioned earlier, we're really excited to be including a whole new way to collaborate on designs with 2020. Collaboration really is a big subject in a designer's workflow. And with Coral Draw Graphics Suite 2020, we take this to a whole new level. The new functionality includes the use of a comments docker or on macOS inspector, which acts as the collaboration hub. Flexible collaboration sign-in options are available, such as through Google or Office 365 account sign-in or with your Corel customer account. It includes annotation tools to allow reviewers to mark up draft designs and provide feedback for the designer. And of course, it includes file sharing through the cloud to make all of it happen in a flexible, seamless way. To add to this, our users, you are central to everything we do. Your requests, wish lists, and feedback play a fundamental role in many of our updates. And to that end, we've added some features and enhancements inspired directly by your feedback and what we receive from you in our community and through other means. There is a new effects docker in Coral Photo Paint that makes it easy to apply, modify, and experiment with effects all in a non-destructive way. For those who know Coral Draw Graphics Suite 2019, you remember the non-destructive effects being introduced in Coral Draw 2019. Now we've learned from you that this is a very powerful feature that also should be available in Coral Photo Paint. So here you are. Coral Photo Paint 2020 introduces the non-destructive effects in a new Docker or on macOS in an inspector. Our redesigned find and replace Docker or inspector offers an expanded search range to allow users to search across multiple pages in a multi-page design. You can also find and replace the color of a color model in an outline or fill or replace text across a multi-page document with one click, literally. We have a new smart selection mask tool in Coral Photo Paint that intelligently expands the selection by finding edges. The mask transform tool has also been enhanced so that transformations can now be applied to pixels within a mask. We've also made it easier to fine tune PDFs before exporting thanks to a new warning that helps pinpoint and troubleshoot issues. We also have a new setting that helps reduce PDF file size by cropping out anything not on the drawing page. And with that, I want to stop talking and hand over to Mo Yogi to show you what is actually in Coral Draw Graphics Suite 2020 for you. Uh, for that, we hand over the screen to Mo to show you Coral Draw Graphics Suite, Coral Draw, and Coral Photo Paint, I think, in action. So, Mo. Let's take a look at some of the feature highlights. And I think the first thing you are going to show us is typography with all new variable fonts. Yes. Thank you, Klaus, for that insightful overview. Hello and welcome to you from my end, everybody, wherever you might be in the world. I'm excited to be able to share the new innovations in CrawlDraw Graphics Suite, specifically from the perspective of creatives like you and I. The new features we will cover is topography, as Klaus mentioned, machine learning. My personal nickname for this is the Corel Intelligent Engine, performance, collaboration, and as Klaus had said earlier, some of the user-inspired features that you guys have come up with. Now, when it comes to topography, as Klaus has pointed out, not only has it become more diverse and dynamic, but now we can go well beyond natural media. Let's explore some of these features. The Design Mind logo mark you see is all type to emphasize design flexibility. If I go ahead and pick up this 
design mind logo set, you'll see that it's artistic text. And so are these letters D that make up the brain. So just a little bit of background. The brain symbol to the left of the lockup is essentially the two Ds from the word design mind in capitals. And of course, the one has been flipped. For this design, we've chosen the Source Science Pro for a very specific reason. One is it's a typeface that was designed by Paul Hunt, and it's a great candidate for screen design. So it's very ubiquitous. So I'll go ahead and pick up this letter mark and see what the possibilities are. I'll do that by way of the properties darker on the far right hand side. Of course, one can do it off the properties bar over here as well. But the docker would keep the controls out of the way as I'm kind of tweaking things. And you'll see here, we're able to go ahead and adjust weight. I've dropped in a design grid for us to make the whole experience a little bit more controlled and design specific. And here you can see we're busy tweaking the weight of the font, of the face. And the way I like to couch this is we have one font with many faces. This is not all, of course. Let's go ahead and look at another font that gives us even greater possibilities. So this iteration, the font is called Amstelvar by David Bala. The good news is that this font and other variable fonts that we have shared with you in the presentation are easily downloadable from sites like GitHub. Let's look at some of the grand possibilities that Corrado Graphics Suite offers us. I'll go ahead and click on the same icon on my proper inspector or Docker depending on whether you're working on Mac or Windows. And we get this whole smorgasbord of possibilities. GRAD essentially is, as you probably guess, an acronym for grading. And it talks to the weight. And you can see that we haven't, in fact, changed the letter forms. Let's look at XOPQ. And this basically talks to either having a narrow or an extended iteration of your design. XDAS deals with a sender, so the AS is your kind of clue, right? And you'll see that we are adjusting things like diacritics and, of course, a sender height. YTDE and the DE is an indication that we are going to be adjusting, as you have guessed, the D sender. And then finally, smaller letter forms like the bolds of E's and, and the G might fall in. So what we could do is we could actually adjust the X height of lowercase characters. And that's going to be done by something called YTLC. You can see that we're able to kind of open up the X height of our letter forms, lowercase letter forms, so they become more legible. Now, you may be wondering why all these arbitrary kind of acronyms and so on. This is built into the actual font set. So we can take this cross-media workflow from print all the way through and execute this in a responsive web design using the same typeface. So what Klaus and I have done is we just created different iterations so you can get a sense of how these all come together. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here for a sec. You'll see that the one on the far top left, we've exploited um, XOPQ. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and pick up this group of objects. I'm gonna head over to the objects Docker for a moment so you can see what's going on there. And what this allows us to do, quite powerful in my opinion, and I can dynamically change all of those elements at one go. So there you can see on the far right hand side, top right that is, we've got a rather elegant, delicate um, expression of grad. And of course, on the bottom left, we have curve width. So extra refers to curve width, condensed or extended. On the far right, we've exploited two of them, and that's Y height of the lowercase D senders, and of course, Y height of the lowercase A senders and the X height. So if you're a type nerd like myself, and I'm guessing a lot of you are, we're going to have so much fun working with us. I'd like to move on to some of the Corel Intelligent Engine components, you know, the AI boosted productivity enhancements we have in Corel. This next subset of features you positively are going to love because it alleviates so many challenges that you and I have to deal with. I've just zoomed into this subset of designs and I'd like to paint a scenario for you. The client says to you, hey, I need something for social. You go tick. And then, of course, client comes back to you and says, hey, guys, how about a poster? We need a poster in a hurry. Now you go, well, dude, you're pushing it just a touch. So I'm going to scroll over. Um, the dude in the circle, that's not the final result. 
that is representative of what your and my frustrations are today. This next feature is so dead easy, even I can drive it. So let's go ahead and have a look at what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go ahead and select this image, right? You can see it's naturally smaller. And typically when we do a resample, things go a bit crazy on us. We obviously want to prevent all of this from happening, guys. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna head over to the bitmap menu over here and I'm gonna choose remove JPEG artifacts. So any artifacts and lossiness that we may have along hard edges and so on has been pulled out. So I'll go ahead and click on this icon and we're gonna jump this up to 400%, right? Crazy number, I know. And um, the next thing we're gonna do is uh, we are gonna go ahead and choose photorealistic over here. So we have gone from just under a meg, as you can see, to almost 16 megs in this case. And let's go ahead and hit OK. And now, basically what the computer is doing is it's processing each one of those pixels. So this is some heavy grunt work the machine's doing over here. Look at that, you guys. A really, really good result. So thank you, Corel, for that. I'm going to shunt our handsome dude to the side for a minute. But guys, this artwork was created basically with art brush on paper and then scanned in. And of course, what I like about Corel Draw is this ability for me to move between the analog and the digital domains seamlessly. Now, each one of us has done a trace before in Corel, but there's some really wicked cool features that I'd like to share with you. So here I am inside of the Power Trace dialog. I'm just gonna set this to none, so there's contrast between the background and traced areas. And of course, you and I could say, okay, well, we could shunt up the detail value all the way to the top, and that's gotten a bit better, but you can see we're losing valuable information here. And this is a 72 DPI scan. It's a postage stamp, really. And you'll see that we have to zoom in and we start to pick up you know, some of the nigglies that can be a bit frustrating. And you could easily tell me, well, you could take up the corner smoothness a little bit. I could. That's going to change the inherent nature of the trace, of course. So it may not all, altogether be true to what we're looking for. And that becomes particularly problematic when you're dealing with type. What I'm now doing is I'm jumping over to this new adjustments tab. The first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is switch on this remove JPEG artifacts. What I'll then do is head over to colors. In this case, it's really just a black and white piece of artwork. Head back over to the adjustment tab and then go ahead and hit illustration. And boom, you guys, that is just way cool, right? Hit the okay button, I'm ready to play. I can ungroup this element, I can start to play with it, da da da. In the interests of time, hide my trace for a minute and I'll hide the original JPEG file and show you the final result that you, Klaus and I came up with. I hope you like it. It's gonna save us tons and tons and tons of time. Investment to be cooped right there, okay? So go out and get this new version, it's gonna be well worth it. Right, so I'm gonna just go ahead and talk to the next feature, again, AI powered, and these are the art style effects that Klaus had spoken to earlier. We'll start with um, this image on the left. I'm gonna head over to properties and courtesy of the last version, my favorite feature I would say by far is this effects control. So thank you for that. And you guys have just gone and made it better. Design Nirvana right here, okay? I'm gonna choose the plus icon from the subset, head over to creator. And there you'll see we've got a new art style subset. There's a whole host of different possibilities here. We can go from acrylics through to impressionism, and we can just wander our ways over to something like Waves, which is Hokusai inspired, and that is just beautiful, but live and changeable at any point in time, right? So I can go ahead and, for example, say OK on this, get the machine to do its thing. Once it's done, the client goes, well, that's a little heavy, my friend. Can you just tone it down a little bit? You go, no problem, right? It's not a committed effect. It's everything still live. Okay. Can you see like what we've done now is we create a blend of the original image plus this really cool kind of Japanese woodcut feel. And that looks just divine. I'm gonna head over to the objects Docker once again. And what we've done is just created a couple of different iterations to just share with you guys very quickly. So this is a pastel mosaic. And let's drop in some text. Whoa. Can you see how just typography and imagery hold your design together just beautifully? And that, of course, is the sunset style that we looked at earlier. And then finally is a really cool iteration of wood blocks. What Klaus referred to earlier is that this effect is not just limited to imagery, as we saw there. We could simply go ahead and jump into this power clip right here. 
and I'm going to pick up just an element so you have a comparative view. And of course, you can go ahead and apply these effects to vector objects, have them live, and you've got to admit that that's way cool, right? So I go ahead and choose something smooth acrylic. So I'll just hit the finish button on this, and that's us basically done with this new really cool art style subset of tools. I guess it's a good segue to Corel Photo Paint. And as Klaus said, the new effects that we're going to share don't change the source image. So here's a whole series of artwork that express themselves into the final artwork on the far right hand side. I love this dynamic workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Edit Bitmap over here. So the first thing you'll notice is that I flip the image in draw and it doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead to my selection subsets and I'm going to scroll down all the way to the very last one, which is a mask selection mask tool. Now I'd like to remove him. There is less tonal range in the background than there is in the foreground in this particular case. I'm going to jump my, my brush size up to 100 pixels here. So I'm just going to go along the edge here. And of course, it's given us a mask. I like to work with a mask overlay because what it does, it gives me a very good sense of what I'm dealing with, right? There's a little bit on the hair that I'd like to go ahead and work in. Let's go ahead and drop into a really small pixel size here, go for like five. And I'm just going to touch that in. Now, typically what I do is head over to mask just to make that mask outline look that much more believable and real when we put it onto a different background is throw in a bit of feather. I'm going to mask the shape. So the first thing I'm going to do is head over to the background lift it off the canvas by clicking on this icon. And with this object one now, I'm going to go ahead and right click on this. And I'm going to say crop object to mask. And now if I go ahead and switch off the mask overlay over here, you'll see that it's knocked out the background. So now all I have to do is save, finish editing. That's going to bounce me back to draw. And in draw, we've got an object without a background. So these other iterations, I'd like to share with you the new effects docker. All right, so let's have a look at how this works. This tile background is actually a fabric pattern. I'll go edit bitmap again. I'm going to create this from scratch. I'm just going to go ahead and toss this. And I'll go ahead and duplicate that particular background object. And then I'll just go ahead and rename it FX for effects. OK, I'll head over to the effects docker over here. I'm going to go ahead and click on the plus icon. Head over to Creative, and let's go ahead and choose Fabric. So I've chosen Quilt over here. Let's mess with the completeness. We'll make it less complete. We'll make them a little larger. And I'm happy with 45 degrees as an angle. Hit the OK button. This is a live effect. I'll head over to the Objects Docker once again. Then you can see FX. I'm going to change the blending modes, and the blending modes are live. So something like an ad would work pretty well. You kind of learn which ones really work well. I'm going to try Screen. Screen's pretty good, too. Overlay is too dark. I'm going to go with add. That's it. All right. Happy days. I hit the finish editing button. It's asking me to save. I'm going to say yes. Zoot back to Corel Draw. Job done. So that was a quick overview of some of the new creative tools in Corel Draw Graphics Suite 2020. Klaus made mention of collaboration a bit earlier, and I'm going to pass back the microphone to him so he can elaborate on that a bit more. Thank you very much, Mo. And yes, I guess that's a good point to jump into collaboration as we see that Latin artist sample artwork here on the on the right of the page. Let's pretend this is a design that is at a stage uh, that it's now ready for review by other stakeholders in the project. And uh, you need to then provide it, share it with your reviewers. And that's what we're looking at now. So let's take a moment and step back and think about what collaboration means to a designer. So when it comes to sharing a design with contributors, reviewers, approvers, what are you typically doing? You probably create a PDF and send that by email and receive a number of PDFs with comments back. These comments may even conflict so that you as the designer don't even know what to do now. And uh, in any case, you will have to deal with these separate documents to look through the feedback. And then you have your design document that you need to actually work with. Now, let me show how that works in CorelDRAW Graphics Suite 2020. What I have up here is the next page of our presentation. But what I want to show you here is how CorelDRAW Graphics Suite 2020 offers designers a dramatically better way to connect and collaborate with colleagues and clients. You can use CorelDraw.app to share designs and get feedback from key stakeholders in real time. 
the new annotation tools in Coral Draw 2020 and in Coral Draw.app, which we are going to show you now, empower teamwork and help stakeholders work collectively. The new comments docker that I just want to open here in Coral Draw on Windows, that new comments docker or inspector on Mac acts as your collaboration hub where you can view, respond to, and resolve feedback, as well as add annotations and notes of your own. So you see some of the options here, uh, for example, with that annotation that I've added here, or a comment that has pinned to the design in this place, many other annotation options that you all get in your uh, comments docker. Now for teams and enterprises, we have an additional functionality those users can now benefit from all new collaborative text editing that you find in the comments docker. And with that collaborative text editing, that allows designers to mark text in the layout for being edited by contributors while they are reviewing the design. Now we've prepared a short video to show you how that collaboration works in real time once the design is in the draft stage, as Mo just highlighted with a few features, how to get here. Once you're ready with that, you can save and share your design with contributors for review. So Coral Draw 2020 provides the new options to upload Coral Draw files to Coral Cloud and share with clients through a web link. Then Coral Draw.app can be used to let clients and other contributors access the shared files and add remarks and suggestions in a review cycle for the creator to address. Contributors can work on the design simultaneously, so all feedback is captured and displayed to all the reviewers instantly, and the designer receives notifications of any changes. Now let's have a look at this new collaborative text editing feature that is available to teams and enterprises through a Coral Draw App Enterprise license. Once the designer has marked up text in a layout for being edited by contributors, contributors accessing the shared design file with their Microsoft Office 365 or G Suite user account in Coral Draw App, they are able to locate the text that has been marked by the designer and enter or paste final copy into the ready-made layout with all text formatting being maintained. Finalizing designs in a team, previously a tedious and time-consuming process, has just become fast and simple. Now, when it's time to act on the comments and annotations, the creator sees everything right in Coral Draw. No more marked up PDFs or image files, saving you time and screen space as you're working all in your Coral Draw design application here, with all the comments being displayed right here where you can act on it. Implement the changes as marked up in the design file, then share again for approval, and you're complete. And uh, completing a design file, we have a number of enhancements that speak to that and help you complete designs in very little time at very high quality. To give a couple of examples, Besides the collaboration with its real-time approval capabilities, we've enhanced the find and replace so that you can now search in multi-page layouts like this flyer that you see the cover page here and do a find and replace across pages to replace color, to replace text, to find objects of a certain type or attribute. And when it comes to publishing, PDF output has been enhanced so that you are now way quicker to identify and solve issues in the PDF export. And now also the file size will get reduced by cropping everything that is outside the page. Now, throughout the demonstration that Mo has done and uh, the pages that I have presented to you, 
Um, you've seen a few examples of how Coral Draw Graphics Suite can help build a brand identity and living it by applying it to all the visual assets you are creating for communication. CD&I Associates, that you see the examples here, is a consulting firm based in Montreal, Canada, with offices in Colombia, America, and Barcelona. This particular design project was done for Latin Arte, which is a non-profit cultural organization that brings together the cultures of Montreal and Latin America. This design, with all its components that you see here, uh, just a few examples of, was submitted to our 2019 International Design Contest, and we loved its vibrant colors, modern feel, and diverse set of outputs. That's why we highlight and showcase this in uh, this presentation with the many examples of where Coral Draw Graphics Suite 2020 can help to even evolve from here and get to the next level of design with all the new tools and enhancements. Now, this is what you get today, actually. Coral Draw Graphics Suite 2020 is available today as a Windows product. And since we've introduced Coral Draw Graphics Suite new to Mac OS as a native Mac application set in 2019, we're also having Coral Draw Graphics Suite 2020 available for Mac today. Coral Draw Graphics Suite 2020 includes CoralDraw.app. And for those who subscribe to Coral Draw Graphics Suite, you will get all the advanced collaboration functionality for sharing files with your peers, with clients and contributors. As demonstrated just a couple of minutes ago, you will get all that included with your Coral Draw Graphics Suite subscription. And for those who prefer to license Coral Draw from the Microsoft Store or Mac App Store, go ahead and you will find Coral Draw 2020 in the Microsoft Store and in the Mac App Store available today with the new versions. Speaking about options, as we support platforms with Windows and Mac products, we also like to give you the choice when it comes to how you prefer to license your software. CorelDRAW Graphics Suite 2020 is available as a subscription option. And actually, if you're an active subscriber to Coral Draw Graphics Suite, you will receive, if you haven't received it yet, it will be delivered to you soon, the new Coral Draw Graphics Suite 2020 as part of your active subscription. You're entitled to use the latest up-to-date product version at all time while your subscription is active. As a subscriber, you also receive all the collaboration functionality, which is cloud services for sharing files in the cloud, making it accessible to your clients and customers and other reviewers in your team maybe. That's all included with CorelDRAW Graphics Suite subscription. So subscription really is the best value for sure when it comes to staying up to date with the products and having all the advanced collaboration features. For those who prefer perpetual licensing, we provide that option to continue that. So you can buy CorelDRAW Graphics Suite 2020 for Windows or CorelDRAW Graphics Suite 2020 for Mac with a one-time payment for ownership of that version and have with that included basic CorelDRAW.app functionality to use the web app for designing on the go. And if you're interested in the additional collaboration services, you can subscribe to that as an extra, as an option for customers who prefer the perpetual licensing of CorelDRAW Graphics Suite 2020. And if you're a business or working in the public or academic segment, we have volume license offerings for you and uh, speak to your Corel representative or to your reseller partner to get information on the available, again, subscription and perpetual license options for you. With that, I want to thank you very much. We really do appreciate you taking the time to listen today. We hope you will take the time to try out the new version of CorelDRAW Graphics Suite 2020, and you can find the free trial on coraldraw.com today, now actually. You may also like to take some time to explore coraldraw.com, which features a lot of new resources, including tutorials, galleries, webinars, like this one, and more to help you in your design workflow. I want to also thank 
Mo Yogi for presenting the highlights of the new Coral Draw Graphics Suite 2020 today. I hope you share my excitement and I really love the designs that Mo has presented to us. So go ahead, try out Coral Draw Graphics Suite 2020 and find your favorite feature in the new version Coral Draw Graphics Suite 2020. Many thanks again. We wish you a good day.